Ever wonder how people are getting away with paying zero taxes? You wanna learn how to do that too? That's why in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to pay zero dollars in taxes by investing in real estate. Let's get into it. First thing I gotta say is I'm not a CPA and I'm not a tax attorney. Everything I'm saying in this video, take it as my personal experience. There are so many amazing tax benefits to investing in real estate, but I narrowed it down to the top five. So the first one is depreciation. With this one tax benefit, you could eliminate basically all of your tax burden. Depreciation means exactly what it means. It's depreciating the value of your rental property. But James, isn't the point in investing in real estate is, you know, buying properties that are cash flowing, keeping them long-term so they appreciate? Well, that's exactly what's happening. Your property is now appreciation, but on paper, it's depreciation. And now what I mean by on paper, that means whenever you're filing your taxes, you can deduct 100% of the property's value over 27 and a half years. And that comes out to roughly 3.636% every single year you can deduct off your property. You can calculate this two ways. You can either, let's just say for example, you have a $100,000 property and now you can multiply that by the 3.636% and you're gonna be able, you know, obviously get $3,636 or you can take that $100,000 and divide it by 27 and a half years. And that too is going to come out to $3,636. So you can do it either way. Now you can take that $3,636 off of your taxable income. Let's just say for example, that this rental property was cash flowing $300 every single month. Well, at the end of the year, that comes out to $3,600. Well, now you're writing off your entire profit from this property just off of depreciation. We have four more types of tax benefits to go. Here's something about depreciation that not a lot of people talk about is you can actually accelerate the depreciation. What does that mean? Instead of taking the 27 and a half years, you can now do it five, seven, or 15 years. So whenever you're shorting that, shortening that time frame, your tax deduction is going to be obviously higher year over year rather than doing the 27 and a half years, and it's gonna be smaller if you do it that way. One of the main reasons to accelerate depreciation is whenever you have a high taxable income. You want to squeeze as much tax deductions as you can for the next five, seven, 15 years. But there are things that need to be done before you can even accelerate your depreciation. One of those things is a cost segregation study. That's another video all in itself. You do not want to miss out on this video. So click the subscribe button and the bell notification so you get notified when I upload a YouTube video just like this one. And whenever I upload a video like the cost segregation study, you don't miss out. Another big tax benefit is writing off 100% of your mortgage interest payments. Mortgage interest payments are more straightforward than depreciation. So let's just say, for example, that you have a thousand dollar a month mortgage. Now let's say $500 of that thousand dollars is going towards your mortgage interest. You can deduct 100% of that $500 every single year. Later on down the line, obviously that the mortgage interest is gonna be going lower and lower and lower, but you get what I'm saying. Now let's just say that $500 you can write off every single month. At the end of the year, that's $6,000 you can write off against your taxable income. See, that was easy, a lot easier than depreciation. If you want a customized real estate game plan, hop on a call with me. That link is gonna be in the description down below. Whatever situation you're in, I believe that you can start investing in real estate, even if you don't have any money, if you don't have any credit. So I wanna help you achieve Achieve your financial freedom again. Hop on a call with me. Link is going to be in the description down below. Now, the third tax benefit investing in real estate is writing off 100% of repairs. Now, this doesn't mean a home improvements. So let's just say, for example, that you spent two thousand dollars, you know, painting the, the inside of the house, fixing toilets. You can write up 100% of that $2,000 because it's repairs. Now, when it comes to home improvements, that's not deductible. Because if you're improving the value of the home, like improving the value of the home, you have to deduct that with depreciation, not writing off as repairs. Now, you have to deduct the repairs in the year that they occurred or you can't deduct them at all. And one example of a home improvement is the roof. Now, the fourth tax benefit you have to investing in real estate is writing off your property taxes. Now, let's just say, for example, that you know, it, this is all wrapped into your mortgage unless you say otherwise. So 99% of you that's watching this video, it's gonna be wrapped into your mortgage. Let's just say, for example, that your property taxes inside your mortgage is $200 every single month. Now we're going to annualize this, and so it's gonna be $2,400 every single year you're paying in property taxes. You can deduct up to $10,000 worth of state and local property taxes. That's if you're filing single, or you're the head of a household, or you're married and you're filing jointly. So that $2,400 that you were paying in property taxes, you can deduct 100% of that $2,400. So if all the other tax benefits to investing in real estate didn't blow you away, wait until you hear about this one, capital gains tax. Now we all know 
most of us know what long-term and short-term capital gains taxes so if you keep it long-term like a, pro a rental property long-term you've kept it over a year so you're subject to capital long-term capital gains tax now if you kept it less than a year you're you're subject to short-term capital gains here is the big tax benefit it's called the 1031 exchange on what the 1031 exchange basically means that you're going to be taking your capital gains and you're going to rolling it into another property so let's just say for example that you have a hundred thousand dollar loan left on the property you sell that property for two hundred thousand dollars you make a hundred thousand dollar property if you just sell it you put that money in your bank account it is now either subject to short-term or long-term capital gains which however long you've held the property for but instead of selling it and then putting that money into your bank account you're now going to utilize the 1031 exchange what this does again it's rolling the profits into another property now this property has to be an equal value or a greater value than the property that you just sold here's what is so powerful about this like if you can't even if you can't see this right now let's just say for that two hundred thousand dollar home that you just sold let's say you were cash flowing three hundred dollars every single month well, you are going to be making $100,000 off the sale of the property. You can roll that $100,000 into another property that might be cash flowing you, you know, let's just say $1,000 every single month. So triple what you were making and you don't have to pay any capital gains tax on the profit that you just made because you just rolled it into another property. Now, this isn't deducting taxes. This is what's known as deferring your taxes or you're kicking how much you owe in taxes down the road. Now, there are ways around that as well where you can just pass off, you know, your properties to your children whenever you die and then your taxes are forgiven. That's how it works in a nutshell, but there are some legal things that you have to be doing in order for that to happen. So get with the tax attorney, get with the CPA or whoever and figure out how to do that based off of your situation. Some key details that you need to know whenever you're going to be using, utilizing a 1031 exchange is after the sale of your property, you now have 45 days to identify a piece of property or that money is just gonna hit your bank account and you're gonna to have to be subject to capital gains tax. But if you identify a property within that 45 days time, period now you have 180 days or six months to actually close on a property now here is something that not a lot of people know about is that 180 days actually doesn't start whenever you identify the property it starts whenever you sold that property so whenever you close on the property and you put your signature on there saying you know you sold this property to whoever well now your 45 days begins to identify a property and the 180 days also begins that same day so basically if it takes you 45 days that whole 45 days to identify a property that you were going to buy in 1031 exchange into well now you really have 135 days or four and a half months to close on the property Property now. So it's just something to look out for whenever you're doing a 1031 exchange because that's actually one of the biggest headaches to utilizing a 1031 exchange is identifying a property 45 days after and closing on a property 180 days after you sold your property. For all these different ways to reducing your tax bill, I highly recommend that you talk to a qualified CPA on how to do this. Now, if you wanna know if you should be getting an LLC to start investing in real estate, there's gonna be a video popping up right here that talk about that exact thing. So go check out that video. In the next video, I'm out, see it.